bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Everyone, welcome to Children of Erte. We're so excited to be here tonight. Um, I think I want to know why I'm flustered. We always go straight to Adam, right, for our amazing sponsors. Why would you be flustered? Why would anyway? I be flustered? I don't know. All right, uh, we've we got talking incredible... about diamonds and something. Yeah, we were talking on about diamonds. No reason why to talk about diamonds. Talking about, talk about diamonds. Don't, don't read know. into that. No. Um, First, we have Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you're coming from there, hello, stay a while and listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can grab an Electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. Thanks so much for the support. We have Die Hard Dice. You can use the code Erte to get 10% off your order there. We are also giving away a $20 gift discount promo code. So pay attention to the prompts in chat for that. They have gifted our cast with, here we go this time, Feruza's Formers of Fate. Ooh. Ooh. Considering Ooh. last week. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, considering last week's discussion, that's on point. Yeah, Man, very good. Alliteration is so satisfying. It really <laughs> is. It really is. I, I, I wish I could remember. I heard some just out in the wild the other day and like uncontrollable smile across yeah. my face alliteration yeah. is the best so all so right satisfying <laughs> especially all right. that you can get those internal ones those mm -hmm. are really the really mm -hmm. good ones. yeah let's just talk about alliteration <laughs> for the entire entire show today I, I could <laughs> it wouldn't um, be off brand for me at least <laughs> me neither <laughs> finally tonight you'll hear the dulcet tones of sirenscape because epic games need epic sound check out sirenscape Dot com. They've got lots of really cool stuff, so check it out. I use it in my own personal games. Uh, big fan of Sirenscape. Thanks for all of that support. I am Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane. We have tons going on. Uh, I uh, spent all day long working on Avatar Legends Nexus <gasps> character tools. So what? lots and lots of fun. It was a good day. A lot of hard work, but but very, very good day. And I was listening to the soundtrack the entire day. So uh, really, really great day. Uh, but uh, but those are on the doorstep. They're coming, uh, coming pretty soon here. Um, really looking forward to getting that out. Tonight, I am playing Silas Sorrell your dimensionally displaced magical super fan. How did you even come up with that? I don't think I've ever asked you that. It's like perfect. I don't, I, I think it was for a Halloween costume gag or something. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's stuck. It. It's stuck. All right, hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body, and I'm a professional costume artist. And I am heading to Washington SummerCon this weekend. I'll be there Saturday and Sunday all day. Like, like um, my state? Con. What state? Like oh. Washington state? Yes, Washington state. Oh. I'll be in your state. What, what side of the state are you going to be on, Alicia? <laughs> I'm going to text you. It's okay. Like <laughs> But I, need, I do need to pose it, out. but I'll be at Washington uh, Summer Con this weekend, and then Sunday I'll be at the con, and then I have to do a big, huge panel with Yaya Han and Anna Mia regarding costuming and uh, cosplay and making it a business and just getting into it and so having cool. fun with it. So I'll just tell you guys every time I have something coming up every week, but this week is Washington Summer Con. Tonight I am playing Feruza, Josephine Armstrong, Terry at Law, if she still has a job. <laughs> Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on the interweb as at DreamWisp or uh, streaming as DreamWisp Jen. Um, today, we launched a huge info dump about dreams and machines. So much information about the world. There is an hour-long video delving into lore with all the devs, uh, talking about the factions. Um, you can hear about uh, 
one of the factions I helped design, which is partially based on long haul trucker culture. Yay, um, they're cool. called the rivers and they're super cool. And I, I really am very proud of, of what we did with them. Lots of cool influences, um, but it's an amazing world. And I'm, I'm really excited that we finally get to share information about the world. So dreamsinmachines.com mm -hmm. and on the Modifius YouTube channel for the, uh, the videos, they have a couple out and the, the pre-orders opened for uh, Gen Con where the starter set will be launching. Um, <laughs> but tonight, <laughs> I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn, who has been taking a nap and then went off <laughs> elsewhere <laughs> to make trouble, perhaps. I'm excited to find out. Who am I? I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on, on the socials as Obo Lauren and sometimes, hopefully, maybe at a convention that Alicia will be at so that I can cheer her on because she's awesome. Because, you know, if, if you're going to be in my state, I should try. Uh, but if I can't do that, then I'll at least be here tonight playing Carolyn Neb Stern, who is still mourning the loss of her emotional support wolf maybe she'll find another animal this week i don't know <laughs> um hi and i am hope lavelle you can follow me on twitter at the hope lavelle you can watch me as a dungeon master on misfits of alceta every wednesday on the uh that's how we roll channel and tonight i am playing miss robin beckett your friendly granny for hire who did not blow a hole in the train by casting <laughs> fireball and hurting everybody. It didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't fireball! Happen. It, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. <laughs> Except we do because it was Hope's first fireball. It, it, was, was, it was amazing. It was very exciting. I and underestimated it, how dangerous it was. People don't, people don't exaggerate. <laughs> how then it was, it was your first fireball. Yeah. <laughs> It achieved what you needed it to achieve. Yeah, sure it did. To mm -hmm. blast a hole in the, in the roof of this. <laughs> we got in, didn't we? You're in. <laughs> um, and I am Deborah Ann Wall. I am your storyteller for this evening. Um, I'm also doing a convention this coming weekend. I will be at GameCon Canada in Calgary. Ooh. I'll be playing Gloomhaven and Dice Throne and signing and taking pictures and doing all those fancy convention things. I will not have made my own outfits. <laughs> Although, no, I, I will be wearing a hand-knit sweater. So if you see me, that I will be wearing a made sweater. <laughs> So I kind of kind of satisfy the cosplay. Um, but anyways, we are here tonight for another chapter of Children of Erte. This is the 49th chapter. This is starting to be a long book, um, but a very exciting one. At that. What are we doing so, to celebrate next week? I know, our 50th oh, episode. Wow. We're halfway to that centennial. Pretty cool. Wow. Um, so yes, so... Uh, where we left off, you got, all had a really long, interesting chat. You you built an igloo, which was incredible, um, to really create some a nice, safe, comfortable place for you to stay. Um, uh, you had long discussions about what you saw and changes that are happening. Uh, when you woke up, Maeve had left, uh, but you felt relatively assured that she was all right. We'll come back to that in a moment. And you went back off to find the train, which you did um robin blasted a hole in the snow <laughs> to create an access and i believe neb and feruza were the two mm -hmm. that went down into the train at this moment yes so we're gonna pause where we ended last time and kind of pick up with Maeve and what was going on there so Maeve, you just had the coziest most lovely deep sleep an entire structure was built around you as you slept away huddled into your hoodie when you wake up, you see the other four are cuddled up in there. The fire has slowly burnt down to embers, but it's still, you know, pretty warm in there. Um, and you see this igloo that has been built around you. Sun is up. It's early morning. Well, I'm really glad they put on the coffee and woke me up before my wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. And I'm going to go sort of looking around seeing that it's safe inside I'm going to go kind of peek outside take a stretch 
Yeah, so they've created a little a little hole, and as you crawl over towards it, and it's just kind of crawlable height, um, you can see that, that there's been gently falling snow for hours. Now, you can see daylight, but it has sort of covered over, and as you reach forward and kind of brush it aside, you can make this little passageway and pull yourself forward. The first thing you see is just a whole vista of trees in front of you. As the snow gently falls from above, it doesn't create too much of a pack on the bottom. It, you know, it seems to kind of dissipate when it hits the ground in most places. And about 20 feet away is an enormous stag. He stands there, he starts to pull some bark off the tree with his teeth, scraping at it with his enormous antlers. Does he look moose-like at all? A similar <laughs> horn structure. He is definitely a stag and not a moose. Fair enough. It's very strange that we have all of these creatures with horns who are huge getting in our way or following us. But I just, I sort of will walk not getting too close because uh -huh. I don't want to startle. You gotta be careful of the fae. Like you don't want to risk the fairies. <laughs> um, you never know. So without startling uh -huh. this creature, I'm gonna sort of walk a little closer to get a better look. As you come closer now within 15, 10 feet, it notices you and its eyes lock on yours. <sighs> Let's out a big sort of fluff of air as it begins to step closer towards you. I'm sort of going to freeze in place a little bit. Just not wanting to. I don't know what to do here. Am I supposed to make myself bigger here? Or are you supposed to run away? <laughs> Didn't do so well in scouts. It comes within five feet. It's head higher than yours. It's 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 antlers matching with the branches above the trees as you look up at it it almost blends in as if its antlers went on forever and suddenly poof, it's gone and you look down and there's a small garden gnome standing at your feet he looks up them. Maeve. oh i'm so glad to see you how is everybody everybody doing okay i just thought i'd get a little bit to eat here before i uh, left you i i, 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 I it is, they're they're sleeping, oh. uh, but uh, are you okay? You're, you're okay. I'm it's okay. Yeah. We're, uh, is, everything co collapsed and things were things have been strange, and I know that's a, a relative term right now, but that yeah. was it was. There were there were things that happened after you left or after we left you and went went into the th the place or. What what happened to you? Yeah, well, so I left you. I came down the side. I did the I did the penguin thing. You gotta tell Neb. I just slid down the glacier as a penguin. It was amazing. And then I went off. I, I did a little bit a little bit of scouting. And when I came back, there was this enormous avalanche. The train was gone. Uh, I did. I found this little igloo. I could smell you guys, but I didn't want to wake you up. So I'm just glad everybody's okay. Um, what did you What did you see? What did you find? I want to look closely at Pivim and see if there's yeah. anything that seems different or um, off or uh, is he speaking differently in any way? Is his facial expression at all different from the way he was acting before? Yeah. I mean, insight. other than the fact that he was just very recently a giant stag. <laughs> Do I notice anything about? Oh, uh, what what am I rolling here? Oh, uh, an insight check, please. Insight. An eighteen. An eighteen. He seems agitated, um, a little nervous. Um, you know, Pippin's been in this world for a long time. He approached you all. He, he knows this space. He seems a little, a little jittery. Pivim, you have too much coffee this morning. Coffee? 
Oh, what's that? Uh, never mind. Uh, you just seem a bit excited. Uh, oh no. He kind of looks side to side and back at you. He says, I think I gotta show you something. Can you take a little trip? All right. May I just, I'm just gonna, just don't go anywhere. Okay. Just don't go anywhere. Okay. He goes I up mean to the tree. It. You see him, even as a gnome, he's sort of testing the bark to see if maybe he could eat it as a gnome. I scribble a note and leave it uh, on my bedroll that says, went out for candy cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Disclaimer. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> um, as you Candy come out, cigarettes are actually okay, kids. <laughs> uh, he's he's bouncing a little bit from one foot to the other. You know, all all ten inches of him. Uh, one, you know, one foot to the other. Ready, ready, just up this way. It won't take too long. Okay. All right. Okay. Very sort of skeptically a little <laughs> bit, because every time somebody makes a claim to us, there's always, it's always. So yes, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Do I need to bring anything in particular? Uh, you're warm enough. I, I, so I, yeah, I'm gonna grab all my, grab my stuff. stuff. Hey. He goes, oh, that's all you need. You'll just be just 20, 30 minutes, don't worry, tops. All right. Okay. And I sort of glance at my watch. <laughs> so he begins to take you back up out of the forest, back towards where the train station was, towards the avalanche area, all of that. Um, he's moving pretty quick on his little little gnomey feet um, and, and seems to now kind of know this route. You can see him picking out how to climb this particular rise, get over. So he's he's done this trek before. And even as you, you look down and you see the gently falling snow, it's filling in his little prints of where he's, he's already been this way. Um, as he walks ahead of you, he, he just says, so, so what happened down there? Y'all disappeared. How'd you get out? Uh, a lot of ways. Uh, well, a lot happened, and then we got out through uh, climbing and chipping away at things, and teamwork, teamwork made it happen. But yeah. no, there, there were, it was a, a, a maze of tunnels and, and things in the, in the ice and uh, images, and uh, is time here normal? Uh, I mean, I suppose normal for us. I could, normal is a relative. Say. But does time always move with the same way, or does it change and change in the in the minute? Uh, is it not different time minute to minute? Not for not for me. But I've only been in Lavinia and here, so I don't know. So you'd never say look in the mirror and have your reflection doing something different, or. Uh, can't Go outside say and have your mirrors here in the veil, or in look in the water, oh, or yeah. uh, if you see your shadow moving a bit differently than you are. I wouldn't be surprised. Strange things like that happen lots around here. Why do you see yourself? Something strange in your reflection. Just things seemed a bit out of joint. Mm. Uh, but there were creatures, there were, uh, we each were in different, I think something taught the way to deal with us or test us was to uh, divide and conquer. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, that, that, that tends to be the conventional wisdom, but for us, it's not the way. Perhaps. I'm just saying, you know, well, if someone's trying to get at us. The way is not, and I'm sort of saying this loudly, <laughs> just into the world, just not the way to, to do it is, is to separate us. That's well, just, that's, it doesn't work. We're, well, we're yeah. weaker together. We just, we, we stumble each other up. <laughs> or say you were 
You were quite up to the challenge. We've all, uh, all five of you got out okay. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. We're totally fine. We, we, it was, it was smooth sailing the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I suppose you're, you're missing your, your family there at home. I know I, I miss my brothers and my sisters. Maybe I yeah. sort of, just very briefly, very momentarily, yeah. there's just a flash of something over my face. And he, may, can I, can I yes. counter that with yes. trying to cover it? I'm going to say he, he misses it anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, cool. yeah, he, he doesn't catch it. Um, he's, he's very focused on just like following his path. Like I said, he's agitated. He's trying to get you somewhere. He's asking these questions, but it almost feels like he's doing it to like keep himself from being scared. Um, as you watch him go, he says, yeah, whenever I face life and death, and challenges, I think, of my family. Uh, uh, tell, uh, tell me about your family. Oh, me, I got 23 brothers and sisters. 23 brothers oh, and sisters? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We all manage the same grove. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it's nice to stay close to family. But it's been years since I've seen him, since I came to the Vale. I hope I get back someday. I can I can imagine that. Uh, what is a? I know you've talked a bit about with the veil that it, it's a it's a bit of a, a a liminal place, a place in between in between worlds. Yeah. Do those worlds? Is it like, say, the the point of a of a gemstone? with the different facets where those worlds all connect and you can see different places or is it more of a, a place that's a passageway between they seem to all overlap hmm. so there are places here that match places there and don't match others and then other places where they match up perfectly and you gotta find those places where they match and that's where you can pass between how do you find those places? Very hard. Only the scribes seem to know how. But I stumbled upon that window, that door, so many years ago. I'd really like to find it back again so I could go back to Lavinia, take care of them. Mm. All right, we're almost there. This time he kind of climbs up. You've, you've come down the other side of the avalanche and kind of walked around the edge of this bridge. Um, as you kind of gets down on his belly and crawls forward to look over this overhang. As you join him, you can see this wide vista that goes back around the mountain that was holding the glacier. Um, you can see the train tracks continue along around the edge of the, the, uh, the cliffside here and uh, the trees that come down, but all in front of you is what must be the Farnshall Wilds, just miles and miles and miles of trees and forest, rolling hills and mountains in front of you. Um, you don't, you know, you don't see the train station anywhere quite within here. The, tr the tracks seem to get lost around the bend as it moves into the trees. Um, but you do indeed see a large swath of forest in front of you. He looks over to you and he says, do you see the problem? And as you look closer, almost as if someone walked through and parted them 20 30 foot timbers have been pushed aside creating a pathway as if someone dug it out moving into the forest as far as you can see this path goes winding through the hills through the woods he looks up Who at you and that? says, Or what did that? Oh, I don't want to meet the thing big enough to do that. I can understand that. And you don't know what was doing that. I've never encountered anything that could fell a tree that big. That many of them at one time. Almost looks does, like crop circles. but Does on this an look scale. like the thing that we saw back before when we were at the, at the river and the clearing? Give me a perception check. Six. 
Thanks. Hard to say. That was another situation in which trees had been knocked down, um, but you didn't have this kind of bird's eye view to, to compare patterning. Yeah. Okay. Strange that. You can see he's, you know, he's, Pippim is just sort of warming his hands, trying to keep them from shaking, uh, not from cold, but from the sight of this. Um, How long has it been like that, Pippim? It wasn't like that yesterday. And could any of the rulers do that? He says, perhaps I don't know about all of them. But if something was big and tough enough to do it, they'd probably be a ruler or darn close. Where does that, where are they headed? Into the, far, into Farnshall. Um, please. Do you know where that leads? He says, I know the Farnshall wilds fairly well. Um, it is vast, very easy to lose one's way. Looking for something here. There we go. Um, very easy to lose your way. But if I had to guess, it's going down to find the river and the lake. It's sort of in the center of the forest area. The water comes down from the mountains, creates the lake, and the river heads out to sea. Hmm. It's just tucked around behind those hills there. You see where the path curves. And where's it coming from? Coming from right here, can't you see? Just straight from here. I mean, it probably a little off down to the side because you're, you know, you're on the edge of this overlook. But yeah, I mean, you so can see. So that's probably what caused the avalanche. Possibly. Or, it's or not could far. have. Um, okay. Hmm. So I thought someone should know. Because I think Please. you're headed there you. next time. Uh, I thought that was the plan, except we ha we don't have a train anymore. It's, it's been buried in lots and lots and lots of snow. Well, as you can see, you don't need a train to get to the Farnshall Wilds. They're right down there in the base. Except, except for the part where a lot of what we need is on the train. Ah. And that's ultimately our way to get home. That's and right. Yeah, Those so the showers, the one to the magical And the rain. showers, yes, the showers oh, are on the train. No more so, magical rain. No more magical rain, which I, we know you loved. Oh. Uh, so without the train, we don't have that. And now we have been Just take it away. So we need the train for that. Uh, ultimately, I suppose we could perhaps go there first, but... We don't know what happened to the train. You don't know where the train is, do you? I assume it got hit by the snow. <laughs> that would be my guess. Fair enough. That avalanche, that's a, that's a strong, heavy... So you think it's in the same place where it was before? There, down below. Okay. Just making sure you didn't see anyone, you know, taking a train for a joyride oh, or going no. on an adventure. Or, no. I don't know who's here. I didn't. I didn't see any of that. Last I saw it, it was cool and parked and cold at the bottom of the glacier. Fair enough. Uh, Pivum, if you were to say uh, just a random question, no reason behind it, uh, let's say that in, in some of the ice and the glaciers here, we were to see uh, people maybe in... Uh, other places. Oh. Does the, does this ice serve as a a way to view other places or anything like that? Depend on uh, the kind of of uh, 
magic or magic user that was working on it. But ice is elemental. And that is what these worlds are made of. It is a good foundation for that kind of magic. So the things that one would see hypothetically sure hypothetically could 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 be actually happening it's not something that would be something that would likely be an illusion hard to say what'd you see uh just people in places people in places in trouble ah scared you did it a bit There's no shame in that. And and as Maeve says a bit, she is pale as the snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He let's see if he sees that. You wanna contest it? Mm, I won't contest it. He absolutely catches this. Uh, as you know, the blood drains from your face. Um, he you know, you both are kind of lying there looking over the edge. He takes out one very short, you know, his arm is about <laughs> the size of my hand and just places it on top of your fingers, just as a little short gesture. And I um, sort of like bend my fingers, just sort of a, a slight acknowledgement. Yeah, he says, I know what it is to miss the people you love. Well, let's go see how those others are doing. They're starting Fair to mean a great deal to me now, too. Fair enough. And Maeve stands up, um, and as she does, she sort of shakes the snow from her, she dusts herself off and shakes mm-hmm. the snow from her hair. Um, and her ears sticking out and slightly pointy. Yes. Um, just like a little pokey outy <laughs> um, compared to uh, maybe how much they stuck out from under a hat previously. <laughs> um, and those those uh, under her braids again, her hair is is sort of getting looser and a little bit less um, a little less contained, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, there are uh, two little little bumps, little horns with with the um, the pattern that was on Steve's the runic pattern that was on on all over Steve. Um, As you were lying down next to um, to Pivim, he, he saw this as it poked out, maybe even before you realized it, and chose to say nothing. Um, you know, you and your growing and changing is your business, <laughs> according to Pivim. Um, and as you begin to walk and maybe go up to scratch or check is when you first sort of feel this change um what is how do what do you think about that um well know. they've been they've been it's been forming yeah. for a while um at first i thought it was a headache and then they started sort of i thought i had bumped my head and they yeah. were so it's been it's been a little while and i've kind of been keeping them keeping them hidden but it's at a point where that no longer is is <laughs> quite feasible i mean it's not a, they're not like massive yeah. you know but little little teeny uh okay. teeny horns that that Maeve's hair just barely can cover now um they, they poke out through yeah. through the Especially the as the as the wet snow melts and you know is warm on your yeah, head and your I'm hair sort of gets shaking, flattened, it's, shaking yeah, it loose, harder um, to keep them under wraps. And yeah, uh, I think I think I'm adjusting to it, but also not mad at it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I think there's a little bit of "Don't mess with me, or I'll headbutt you." Um, <laughs> because I can, <laughs> and there's a little bit of joy in that. Cool. It, it's um, not even like a, I, I'm gonna hurt you with it. It's a, it's just a, a little bit of prickly on the outside. Love it. Um, which means I don't have to be quite as prickly on the inside because nice. I can just, yeah. <laughs> well, as you're walking along and kind of come back up onto the avalanche rise, suddenly you hear a <laughs> fire erupts uh, coming up over the ridge of this, of the cliffside. 
<laughs> letter opener, Pivim also immediately becomes like a, a white arctic fox. What was that? Um, he kind of growls and mules a little bit as again he kind of walks on his belly, pulling himself forward as a little white fox to the edge of the cliff and peers over. As you join him, you look down and you see uh, Robin has set everyone on fire. Um, <laughs> they stand about 15 feet away as they start to try and pat themselves off and get some snow. But you also look down and can see that she has busted a hole into the snow beneath her that seems well, that was to an open effective solution. into a dark open space below. So from above, you say this? I do, yeah. Well, that was an effective solution. You hear from above, party. Um, you wonder where that is as, as we're going <laughs> to let uh, Feruza and Neb get down in there. Um, and uh, Maeve, you can come and where, as you sort of come up to join them with Pivim, uh, we have uh, Robin and Silas are still up above looking down into this hole. Uh, so the two of you up there, you see Maeve and Pivim approach. Pivim! Crash! <laughs> It's Maeve. so good to see you. Yes. Oh, and hey, hey, Maeve. Hey, Maeve. <laughs> oh, boy, Thanks I found the that. train. Huh? I feel so loved. <laughs> we went to Pivum stag party. It was delightful. I knew you were after candy cigarettes. Good, I didn't know what happened show. to Pivum. <laughs> I'm, gonna... I'm here, I'm here. I'm okay. You okay? Everybody okay? Down inside uh, the train, I'm assuming if we hear this, I'm going to yank on Feruza's shirt, like mm -hmm. like a small child excited about hearing something. <laughs> Feruza, Feruza, does that, does, does that sound like Pivim to you? I'm actually saying yeah, Pivim, I'm sorry, Pivim was a little white arctic fox. Pivim is still a little white arctic fox, so he's not talking. Uh, <laughs> okay. You assume he's Pivim, I guess. <laughs> Pivim, is that you? He goes, <laughs> it's Pivim. <laughs> He shakes his tail and, in fact, kind of sniffs and then does that foxy thing where he leaps high in the air and just, like, nose dives into the snow after something. And he comes up and he's got a little mouse that he Net Feruza, Pivum is here, if you can hear me down there. He's away! away. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking if, I was thinking if Maeve wasn't awake, she's awake now because of Robin's trick, but... <laughs> I guess she found Pivim too. So that's where you went, Maeve. You went to find Pivim. That's amazing. Yes, maybe, I went to find Pivim. If you maybe Candy work, Cigarettes is her nickname very for Pivim. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad that he's okay. Why is he? No, we, I, I, all I did was go outside and he was okay. <laughs> I mean, technically, that means you found him. So good I did. work. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't. Maeve. Very hard work to step outside. Didn't Maeve, the train. It's, 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 it's it has shed. a skylight now. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's like, the train just, just the train. Well, it's just the train. It blew up. Also, everything was on fire. Is that the, the new solution? Because yeah, I'm not angry. Yeah, can do fireballs. <laughs> Goodness More gracious, great balls of fire. We're going to try and put the shard in. That's what Neb and Feruza are going in for. All right. Um, In blasting open the train, yes. is there anything that was um like revealed in the walls of the train or or any uh, compartments that were previously locked or cupboards that were sealed off that have been revealed by that blast so this little hole here you can do an investigation check it goes into the kitchen as you take a look down it's in the side of the train you can then see the wall and then they have opened the door that goes into the hallway you know below that uh, this car is on its side, essentially. So not quite a skylight. More of a... <laughs> we haven't gotten very far yet. A view. A window. Yes, a window on the side. Yes. Window. So what was your investigation? Vista. Uh, a 19. A 19. So as you kind of bend over into this little ice fishing hole that Robin has opened up, you can indeed see the, like, the structural integrity of the wall and how that is. Um, and the main thing you're noticing, it hasn't revealed any like secret particularly about this, but absolutely the side of the train is not meant to be load bearing in this way. You can already see that there's a big open spaces here and it's starting to buckle. Is, and the, the 
just a refresher on the order of the cars. Is this yes. the last? This is the second to last. There's the caboose. Couple this. Yeah, there's the caboose. Then this is the kitchen, which is where the crew quarters, dining, and lounge are. You then need to move forward into the um, uh, uh, compartment train, which starts with F, ends in A, which then goes to the ga the baggage car, the tinder, and the engine. Okay. So you are towards the back of the train here. Okay. Uh, Pivum. We're going to have a problem if the car collapses. Yeah, we're hearing a lot of scary noises from in here. Fruz and I were going to try to do this real quick. Yeah. Before we lose okay. Go real quick. everything. Then, I suppose. All right, you heard her. <laughs> but also, Frieza, you want to go first? Not... You want me to go first? And I'll reiterate as always, don't I? <laughs> Please. <laughs> For I'm, I'm, is... I'm trying to understand real quick, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, Deb. We how every time if if this collapses, yes, do we get the sense that the train itself is going somewhere? Like, is there more of a descent for it to go down? Do we get the sense, or that, is it like that? You're not sure of. They can they can come take a look at it. But but what I'm talking about more is that the the wall of the train is under packed snow and it's more like the side will collapse and the snow will fill in the, the kitchen the car is going to crush like, but, but we have no like sense we have no sense looking at the horizon yeah that this is like goes down further and we're standing you, on just you packed know snow, it, you know it goes down further because there was a much deeper cliff here okay but the avalanche went over the cliff taking the train with it yeah. um now this car is pretty close to the surface we said like two three feet below the surface um, of ice so there's considerable you know space below it that could be filled in by snow it could be rock it could be trees it could be air yeah, okay. that what you don't know what's below the train at this point got it thanks mm -hmm. Ooh. yes All we right. better hurry up <laughs> Rosie, you want to go first you want me to go first um I think, you know what, I will flank you, so I will go in the back. But before she does that, she sort of looks up at Maeve and, like, sort of regards Maeve and, like, cocks her head a little bit. Like, <laughs> just looking at her a little bit. And then she's like, okay, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> she's just studying Maeve, like, well, that's interesting. Because she's noticing some things are different about yeah. Maeve after that long sleep. And she's just gonna um, start like I crouch down and mm -hmm. moving slowly through the car. Okay, with all those noises. Maeve's so stuff has you... been pretty, pretty much a steady progression. It was, it, it's not yeah. been a super sudden. It's, it's more been like, yeah, it's just, it's been steady-ish. Sure, but there's more exposed, maybe. Yeah, more, more is showing. Now and than, you, and than you hiding. Before. It's, it's at the point where, where I can't hide it. Can't deny it. Yeah. yeah, ears poking <laughs> out. Stuff, just stuff, stuff's all poking out. <laughs> um, yeah, as you do, as you look down in there, um, you can see Pibham in his arctic fox form. <laughs> he keeps sniffing and he starts to move down the car, kind of tracking as best he can, sniffing through the snow. You can, you know, Neb, you'll, you'll be aware of this a little bit, that he's, he's trying to track above the snow where they are below as he's kind of sniffing and going back and forth. So, okay. Faruza, you yes, get to that open first, door. Though. Oh, Neb, you were going to go first? Neb is first. I think, yeah, I right? think I'm going first. Okay. And so mm -hmm. th and there's a moment where I'm looking back and forth, like, what, what are you looking at? But I think I'm I'm probably way too short to really be able to see any yes, any yeah. details mm -hmm. or anything. So, okay, all right. All right. Um, and then uh, uh, Neb is going to take a moment and prepare and rub her hands together and then grab the, the stone that's in her pocket and go, huh? We're gonna have we're gonna have to be quick, real quick about this. Yeah. <sighs> and her hand is gonna glow a little bit as she's huh. gonna give herself a lot of help. <laughs> In fact, a lot of help with dexterity stuff. Fantastic. So. Good. In the collapsing she's... trains. Yeah. yeah. Uh... Um. Uh, but the yeah, Arctic I will... Fox is also going to like Robin and Silas and Maeve. It's gonna nuzzle you, sort of off 
standing on top of the train <laughs> as there's a little creek in it. Uh, it's, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll nose you off to the sides that we don't put any extra weight on top. Of yeah. I don't, side. I don't think Silas would have, if he understood yeah. he was standing on the train, he definitely totally. backs up because he yeah. is very afraid. But he, you know, broke yeah. a chair when he was younger and, and he's very embarrassed about it. It's that. very tricky to see where the boundaries are. And so Piven's going to use his sense of smell to sort of try to help navigate so that we don't accidentally. Um, so Neb, um, as I said, this this train car is on its side. So as you come to the you know the sliding door that you have opened that leads into the hallway, you know you're kind of four two hands, two legs, feet kind of on your hands and knees. You can bend down and stick your head down into the hallway. Uh, across from you or below you, you can see all of the broken windows and the crushed inside. Now this hallway that used to be about three feet wide is more like two feet now as it's been crushed in that way. Um, you look down to the left and you can see, you know, where this kind of comes to an end, uh, back where the crew quarters were and where it would go back to the caboose and looking down to the right, you see the hallway continue until you, you see the kind of bookshelves and china shelves that there were for the dining area. Now, this kind of narrow two foot wide passage is all along the broken windows and the side of the train there. Um, it is again about five, six feet wide now, two feet tall. Um, mm -hmm. You can slide down on your belly. Uh, yeah, Neb will make sure her gloves are on and try to cover <laughs> up as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. That's I'm gonna need Robin to fix that. That was a burn. No, no one's gonna notice that. All right, Frozen, be careful. It's gonna be a lot of glass, and I will pop right. on down and start to uh, give my best impression of an army crawl, which yes. is probably <laughs> nowhere near as good, but is gonna just start crawling. All right. Um, you place your feet on the snow and broken glass of the window that is directly opposite. You feel the snow give a little bit beneath your feet, but it seems to be holding firm, but it is quite uh, icy and, uh, and uh, cold down there. Um, mm -hmm. You get down, lie down, snake yourself onto your belly and begin to pull yourself forward. So not only is this a squeeze, it is also difficult terrain. It is all of the things as you pull yourself forward. Mm -hmm. um, going forward from this space, you see the other doors that are closed that would have led to the crew eating area that's kind of up front. Um, and you pulling yourself forward and you can still see hooked across that little chain that had the authorized personnel only sign hanging off of it. Only now it has sort of dangling a little bit on its side here um, as it goes across the side of the train. Um, I want to reach up and unhook it and, <laughs> and just very quietly say, I think we're authorized. <laughs> you continue to pull yourself forward into what is now the dining area. Now, the first thing you notice is that the chairs were not bolted down. So all of the chairs have fallen right mm -hmm. in front of you, creating kind of a pile of these, these the sort of ornate um, cane backed chairs, dining chairs. Oh. The table itself was bolted to the floor. Um, you have the china cabinets on their side and you know that you have to go up over. You can see the opening now up above you at the other side of the train that then goes into the lounge on the other side. So somehow you're going to have to scale up and over the china cabinet and the bookcase into the lounge. Feruza, are you following behind? I am. And she's sort of like, why did I decide to do this again? And she's sort of crawling like, as you place around. your weight, <laughs> because you're a good Adventure. friend and didn't want me to go alone. Yeah. As you as you place your feet and your weight and you know slide down onto your belly and begin to army crawl, you also feel a little shift in Ooh. the bottom beneath you and a little creak above, but it holds. And you <sighs> also pull yourself forward, feeling in places the scrape of the wall on your back as you pull yourself through this sideways train car coming up behind Neb. So yes, so as you are here on your thing, if you okay. were to look behind you mm -hmm. on the floor, there's the dining table sort of bolted in front oh, of yeah. you, there are chairs in a pile, a china cabinet on its side, um, and you need to get up and over. So we're gonna have to climb through like a, almost like a, like a jungle gym. <laughs> 
<laughs> a, a, a chair chair jungle gym. I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. How far how far up do we need mm -hmm. to go? About four feet to climb up and over okay. this little china cabinet. Oh my gosh! This place is a wreck. Frankly, All I'm right. surprised it's not more of a wreck. To... Oh no! I'm sorry. It's going to be quite a bit more. I'm I'm in the wrong. I'm still thinking of the other rooms. So no, yes, it's going to be more like six feet of china cabinet and bookcase, okay. and then there's that like you know four foot opening on the other side. Is, should I give Neb a boost somehow, or is she just going to be able so to? So you can stand up in this area. Uh, you know, okay. this area is about ten feet tall. You do mm -hmm. now get the sense you've been going down a little bit. Um, the windows on the opposite side have been completely burst through. All you see is snow. A lot of snow has also fallen into this room. Um, but you think that the window may be held and cracked later because the snow is almost sort of frozen in a sheet above that broken window. So it has not fallen through and filled this room. Um, so it was somewhat solid and frozen before the, the glass broke. Froza, mm -hmm. I'm going to say something that's going to sound really dangerous as we're moving through here i think we should try as much as we can to be standing under an open window just in case just in case the thing collapses it won't take us with it Hope, well we'll have more of a chance of not being crushed, crushed under the, the train that's what i'm thinking yeah. but i've never been in this situation feel before. so loud in this tiny compact under snow space as you speak it's like you're the only people on earth I'm really happy we weren't in here when this happened. Yeah, I'm happy Piven wasn't in here when it happened too. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. You want to try to give me a boost and? Yeah. Maybe I can She's help you sort up. Of like... <laughs> so for Ruza, you know, you're you're as you stand up, you're kind of underneath the the table, is kind of in front of you with the legs sticking out of the floor over here. So you sort yeah. of pivot yourself around you know, moving the chairs a little bit. And at your height, you can just see over, you know, over oh. this thing, you know, looking into, the, you know, the, the uh, lounge over there. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, you know, it's bookcases. So the slats are sort of this way, or, you know, it's a china cabinet. There is one vertical uh, in the middle that is now horizontal. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Doing my best to, to, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, to make it clear. Okay. Um, so yes, you've moved the dining chairs to kind of get closer to that space there. You're now on the other side. Behind you is the flat of the table. Do we see any, it's just basically, this is all we see, just quiet, emptiness, nothing strange. Looking nothing over strange. that bookcase into the lounge, you can see again, all the furniture that was not bolted down oh, has Lord. fallen to the other side. Now here, the snow has made a significant more, significantly more impact. It's really pushed everything in at the, at the corners, at the edge of this, um, this car. Um, but you yeah. can still see the exit. All the windows are broken to be able to sort of crawl out down there and you can see the coupling in the snow beyond. Okay, um, she relays all of this to Neb, which she yeah. can see, because we can still get through there, right? You can like, get through we... there. Okay, so she just tells Neb, what we're gonna have to contort ourselves in order to get through there to do. <laughs> when we get to the coupling and we're gonna have to go outside, outside into the snow or whatever, and then, um, I'll see if I can uh, shoot some fire upwards so that everybody knows where we are in okay. case we have to. In, oh, that's a good case, idea. I, I hope so. Idea. I don't know if that'll help too much, but at least they'll know where we are. But let's get mm -hmm. up there first. You want to okay. give me a boost? Yeah. I was All never right. a cheerleader, but I watched it happen a bunch of times. Let's see what we can do. How, how long has it been at this point since the... I mean, at least five minutes. Oh. Okay. N nothing yet. If it gets nothing to be yet. 10, I, okay. you know, Silas is probably going to do something, but I just want to make a sense. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Um, we'll keep, in, keep in, uh, that in mind. Okay. okay. So, yes, uh, Feruza. Yes. Um, you're fairly strong. This is just a boost. I don't think we necessarily have to do a check for it. So, you know, you make a, a little bucket with your oh, hands. Yeah. <laughs> Neb is fairly light and steps in yeah. it. And you're able to kind of boost her up um, mm -hmm. so that, Neb, you can get your hands on top of here. Now, let's do an advantaged strength check for Neb to pull herself up on top of oh, no. case. All with right. the help <laughs> of Feruza. Maybe I should have given Pushing. myself. Yeah, yeah, that's, oh, jeez. Oh, so I rolled a five and a four. 
Okay. Oh, good. Oh, great. So which gives me a, which gives me a five, which gives me a four. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, you get your arms on it, and even with Feruza pushing, mm -hmm. it's a pull-up, right? Like, oh, how many yeah. people can do a pull-up? Um, you know, and Feruza, you're mm -hmm. getting her up like this here, but you can't quite get it to the point where she can get her waist up over it to kind of help with the, uh, the face. And, and unfortunately, Neb, you just sort of slide back mm -hmm. down. It is cold and covered in ice um, and snow here, and you just sort of slide back down. When you make that impact from that slide, Again, a little settling of the train. Some snow from that open window above goes plop, plop, falling down into the train. Are we hearing or seeing any of that? Give me a perception check. <laughs> this is not going to go well for some of us. Um, Nail biter. Nail biting. That is 10. 10. You do not notice anything. I just rolled for Pivim. Mm -hmm. Pivim also does not notice anything. Pivim is still... <laughs> Oh gosh! Little Arctic <laughs> fox sniffing everything, trying to kind of see if he can keep track of where, uh, you know, he can smell through the snow. But he's he's doing the best he can. All right, Feruza, I think we gotta yes. do this the other way around. I think you go first and then pull me up. I think that's okay. Feruza was literally frozen when that when she caught Neb and that e -e -e happened. And she's so she's like, okay, wait. let it settle for a second. Let it settle for a second. Okay, and she's gonna put Neb down carefully. <laughs> And she's gonna try to like just hoist herself up, okay. and hopefully she can actually do a pull up, and she surprises herself. She's like, you oh. go ahead and go for it. That is an okay. athletics check for you. Okay, if that don't make this, I I swear. <laughs> do I have advantage? Um, you're not being helped, so no. You Maybe don't you want, want help. my help. <laughs> no, I literally my help would hinder you at this point. I didn't give myself that kind of help. I should have given myself the other kind of help. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh. 22. Okay. You get one arm up and yeah, it's like muscles grew overnight for it. You know, you worked them out the other day making yeah. igloo blocks. So you're like, you're real primed. Um, yeah. She's so like, yeah, you get your arms up there. You pull yourself right up, get your weight distributed so that you can get up on top. Now in this like four foot space, you get uh, your feet under you crouched mm -hmm. there like a superhero and kind of looking around now again right above your head is this crunched in ceiling um but you are now no longer under the window where the snow is exposed you can look down and see neb on one side and as you look down at the other you see the cluster of armchairs and tables and things that have fallen to that side of the room and across the way is the door out into the snow and potentially the next car all right. Yeah, it's really crowded over here, Ned, but um, we're pretty good. You ready to, for me to grab you and drag you over? Call me up. <laughs> All right. Feruza, now you can do an, an advantaged athletics as she uses her thing to help as you hoist her up. Okay. That was scary. 19. 19. <laughs> If I you drop grip, Neb, I swear. You know, <laughs> best buddies for lifestyle uh, yeah. and pull her up. Neb, you use your feet to kind of push on the, the china cabinet where the glass has broken and get some purchase. And you get up next to her on this, you know, on this uh, bookshelf slash china cabinet and can now mm -hmm. see the same thing around you. The car yeah. remains stable. So All there's right. the door. Let's get to that door yeah. and then see what we have to do to get to the next car and I can send up the flare. Perfect. All right. Just gonna move the door. The bookcases have all lost, you know, every bit of books have fallen out and just scattered onto the ground below. A all lot the romance of romance novels, no. All those romance oh, novels. No. Just seeing, yes. <laughs> it's okay, you can get them at the airport. Um, they all, all, a lot of snow has fallen and there's so many, so many glass and so many windows in this particular part of the train that a lot of snow has come into this area and covered up all this spice. So much so that the, the six feet that you did here now is only four feet um, to get down and kind of even three feet to put your feet down. Um, but as soon as you do, you can see it is icy. This is really slippery Ooh. snow down below Ooh. you. Mm. Yeah, we don't want to fall in here. Be really careful. Do you, can you do anything with webbed feet? No, don't do that. Let's just keep as just stay I mean, safe yourself. Don't change. <laughs> I mean, I can, but then I have to be a spider, and I I don't know if that would make you happy or not. So maybe you just want to deal with me. I'll keep the nib. Okay. Thanks. All right. Save the spider. Save the I'll, spider. I'll I'll I'll. 
I'll save Spider Neb for um, last resort. And Neb okay. is going to hop on down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of the help that she gave herself, um, I don't take damage from falling 20 feet or less. Okay. Nice. So Fantastic. I, I'm a complete uh, and utter klutz going on the way up, but on the way down, she's just going to poop. Okay. So as you poop down and kind of, you know, it's only three feet. This is not even, you know, you guys could just place your feet down. It's just that when you place your feet, you feel that this is, this is ice. This is like stepping onto a slope of ice. Um, as soon as you let go of the bookcase at all, you can feel yourself start to slide. Um, it is about six feet across to get to the door of this kind of sloping, icy snow. Should you said all the books had fallen out of the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Is there like a pile of books somewhere? They're all kind of covered in this snow and frozen uh, as well. But yes, if you want to go over and try to get more purchase using that, I would allow it. Yeah, I think I'd be looking. Feroza, it's it's a nice skating yeah. rink down here. And then I think that's the path Neb would try to take is Great. one that might have more paper under sure, her. Sure, sure, sure. Snow. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So instead of going on kind of the, the, the snow slope that's right below you, you holding on to the bookcase, kind of, you know, rock climb, pull yourself over to the side where you see most of the books and things have uh, piled up and you do feel a little bit more purchase there. Um, mm -hmm. So you can start to climb over towards the sliding door. Mm -hmm. As you move your way over, the coupling between is of course filled with snow. Um, that area is not open. Um, but you can see that there are some air pockets and things. You can see the coupling, and you can see that that other car is still attached to this one. Oh, thank God. Um, yeah. We don't can have to we... go looking for it. Yeah, that's... go through all of this and then not find the car. That'd be bad. Can we get the door open between the two cars? Um, can Feruza it... get the door open between the two cars? You want to go try? Feruza. Um... Yeah, I think, I think as soon as, as Neb looks at it and just looks at her and says, you want to try to open up the door? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because I'm, I don't have any fireballs down here, but if I had one, I think I would want to try it. I'm also afraid of making any big moves down here because of how anything we've done in here has created some sort of a movement within the train. Yeah, I agree. And while uh, the big fireball that Miss Robin did was absolutely amazing, maybe it's a good thing that all I got, all I got is this. <laughs> and her fist lights up with fire. <laughs> small, small uh, so fireballs for a small me, you know. If Feruza, if you follow the same path that Neb took around by the books, you are yes. also she like sort of across. takes yeah. it slow like this. All right. Order, so, she slide into. so you are both over there. The door can open, but also the windows are all busted. So mm. that you know, there's snow right outside. Some of them are air patio. This was all sort of windowed around, um, almost like a you know, conservatory kind of space, observatory area. Um, so, in fact, I would say for Ruza, as first as you like start to take a good look at it, you know, the door frame, the metal door frame is all wobbly and punched in in places. Mm -hmm. So you don't think this door is going anywhere. It's pretty much busted. Oh. So we're going to have to get out of the train then and go around somehow. Or... You can go out the windows. I'm saying there are windows. Oh, on go out the, the window and go around that. The windows way. Okay, are busted so... and open. You could you could go through the windows. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be calling the windows. It's not gonna work if I try to open the door. It's pretty much busted and locked in the direction that it's bent in. All right. So let's try the window. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. at least this is something you know. One less thing we have to try to jostle the train with. And mm -hmm. Neb has continued to hold that gotcha. fire in her hand, and she's just gonna. Yeah slowly put her hand forward and is going to take a little bit of time and like clear out the snow in between gotcha. so that there is a clear path to go to the next window, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic. Perception check from both of you. I would love if you would roll that. You got it. <laughs> uh, plus seven. Gotcha. And Feruza, perception check from you. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'll try it. Why not? Oh, look at that. 22. Hey. 22. Um, so, Neb, you're real focused on what you're doing. For Ruzi, you notice that as she melts, similar to what was happening when you were in the avalanche, mm -hmm. the water that is created from the melted snow seeps down and starts to create almost an ice 
pole that is very slippery, but it also Ooh. does seem to brace against the snow above. So she is simultaneously kind of hardening a tube for you all, but it is very, very slippery tube here. This is a water slide that she is creating. You've created um, an amusement park under the snow. Creating a Neb. tube. So Neb, as you are doing this, kind of one hand holding on to the, you know, the window uh, slat here, and then the other sort of creating this, you know, space around where the coupling is, mm -hmm. you begin to notice that if this coupling is about at this angle, where it connects and would go to the next train is bent. Oh, Lordy, the descent. <laughs> oh, for as face, far Ned? as you can What's tell. That face? Uh -oh. What's that face, Ned? The car <laughs> below you is vertical. Uh, maybe, maybe Miss Robin should have come. I think we're doing more climbing. Uh, what do you mean? Well, it looks like the other, the car we need to get into, um, if it's a Tetris block, it's one of those long ones and it fell in long ways down. We're gonna have to go, we're gonna be dropping into this car. But, oh. but yeah, yeah, before we do, before we do, and I'm gonna dig out a little bit of the snow in the uh -huh. tube that I've made uh -huh. and mm -hmm. start using the, the fire that I have mm -hmm. to basically burn a hole through the snow above us mm -hmm. so that I could create at least a, a window a up top yeah, gotcha. and and perhaps an escape hatch if we need so you begin to kind of create again like an ice fishing hole above you now you are probably three gosh you are probably 15 to 18 feet below the surface at this point okay, okay. i can throw Where it up to standing. 30 feet you can throw it up to 30 feet all right so you are just working on this thing um mm -hmm. we'll say it's been 10 minutes up there silas uh and this has not burst through yet it's going to take a little time for her to create yeah. all of this is there anything you want to do you have heard neither heads nor tails of them yes i am going to so is pivum still I just rolled for Pivim. Pivim is right above where Neb is doing this, right? So oh. Pivim is gone about, I want to say, oh gosh, I'm so bad at these numbers. I should have kept my other It's going to be important um, for what I'm about to try to do. Yes, so. I know. We're going we're to go with you in a minute. Uh, so I say there's a eight feet there. Uh, so Pivim runs, let's say, 30 feet away from this ice fishing hole in the direction that Neb and Feruza went, about 30 feet and is just doing circles above this one area. If a fox could bark uh, like Lassie. What does the fox say? The fox goes <laughs> and, and does again, one of those like high fox jumps and puts its nose, you know, down into the snow um, as though it's- But, but I get the yeah. sense that this is definitely on top of the train at this point. It's it, it's 30 feet down. These cars, again, I'm so bad, forgive me, are maybe 50 feet long. So, you know, they came in kind of in the middle, but you could, you know, conceivably, I would buy, you might- I, 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 I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is yeah. wherever Pivum currently is, yes. do I get the sense that I'm stepping on something and adding my weight to it? You might. Or is there any way for me to um, sort that out? You you can go ahead and give me a perception check or an investigation, whichever you prefer. Uh, we'll go with investigation. Go with an investigation. Um, so 16? 16. Um, where you are looking in the, I, you know, the hole that Robin made, you mm -hmm. sort of, you know, you peek your head in, get a spatial sense of it, move back, maybe like dig a toe into the snow and kind of, Try to keep that line straight, keep checking back and forth and dragging it down. And you begin to kind of, in your mind's eye, picture this train layout. You get the sense that Pivim is right, just beyond the edge of the train, right where the coupling would be. Okay. Um, I am going to, uh, as the 10-ish minutes uh, mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. I'm going to slowly Mm -hmm. like walk <laughs> trying to like I'm kind of like turning sideways just trying to make sure that each step yes. I'm doubling kind of like doubling my feet up and stuff just to make sure that I nothing starts creaking or anything uh -huh. else like that <laughs> um and then um I'm going to try to make it to where Pivum is 
and then I am going to attempt to detect thoughts straight down and um, oh, just to see if I can wow. pick up where they are. Um, but the and range on 30, this is 30 ahead. feet. Yes. 30 feet. Uh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> Neb, Feruza, what are you thinking? Um, go ahead, Neb. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> That's, that's what you hear at first. Nothing, because it's a lot of snow. Allie, yep. Allie, yep. Because she's Allie. throwing fire. Allie, yep. Allie, yep. Is there like a basketball player down there? I don't understand. Faruza, what this. are your surface thoughts? Um, Faruza is thinking okay, so if we go down, we are not going to be able to get out unless we have climbing equipment. <laughs> So All right, so I literally think we okay. <laughs> that's so what you get. <laughs> if if, if yeah. she really thinks mm -hmm. that, then okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I pick that up, and then um, basically I'm going. So Silas definitely has tested the boundaries of this, and he gets the sense he might not know it's exactly thirty feet, but he knows right. about how far he he's right. been able to do this. Um, and you know, not everybody always knows when he's, uh, you know, practicing it, but he is trying to be very respectful of everyone, um, because it's hard for him to cut off sometimes also, you know? And so, um, he's yeah, he, he, he's trying not to hear all the weird demented stuff yep. that's in, no, I'm just saying, but, um, but anyway, so, um, so he is, um, uh, and, and so turn tell miss robin um and let's see who else is up there uh mave yes yeah. and uh mm -hmm. just uh, i i think they're within you know 10 yards or so um like i, I they're they're it feels like they're further down possibly mm -hmm. though Pippum um, starts digging like a dog in his no. little foxy thing he's digging down over what, that area what's that Pivum? <laughs> jimmy is stuck in the well <laughs> Dives, do digs, do digs, we digs, need digs, to go digs. down there? He's just doing circles kind of around that area. I don't know. Uh, I can also say, though, that uh, apparently Feruza is uh, concerned that they're not going to be able to make it out without gear. So they might be like on a little bit of a one way trip here unless we do something. How close am I to? That sounded more ominous than I meant. Especially as, as Pippum is digging down, Pippum suddenly and backs up and kind of waits, gets low to the ground looking here, and suddenly you see a glowing orange light as a huge chunk of snow, Neb, falls out of this area, losing all of its you know structural integrity and kind of laughs in your face. <laughs> um, you brush it off and look up, and you can see you have now created like a chimney tunnel, 18 feet up from you. Um, you can see sky. It is quite dark down here, but that little bit of light comes through as you blink, looking up at it, and a little Arctic fox sticks its nose over the side. Silas and is definitely going to look down the hole if there's now. Silas goes, Hi. now Silas's head bends over. I didn't, I didn't hit anybody, did I? Uh, no, um, okay. we're all good. Are you okay? Silas, if you're still listening in, in her head, Neb is going, if I had hit one of them, I would never have forgiven myself. I don't even know what would happen if, if and, I had and, to smell Silas, burning Silas pots, almost treats that would be that, so bad. He, he almost treats that like you are saying it. And he's like, no, seriously, we're okay. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, Faruz and I are in between the two train cars. Good news, we're okay so far. Bad news. So far. The, so far I mean, I said so far. Uh, bad news. <laughs> the car we need to get into go straight down like oh, sharp no. drop yeah. hey listen like this might be time for a confab and maybe we should have done this before y'all all got in there but i just want to oh. say that like seriously okay are we putting the mirror shard in the mirror for safekeeping because otherwise i don't think that we're getting this i, I don't think we're getting the whole wall out of the train um so like are we just doing it where people can't bad guys can't take it away from us or like is that our plan here it's i mean i thought yeah. it was a, who knows 
I thought it was. Uh, uh, what if we put it in and then magically the train comes back? I mean, anything could happen. Miss Robin, yeah. I know we've seen some wild stuff in these 12 days, but I don't know if that is possible. Or what I was thinking is not just uh, for safekeeping, but then we get a chance to talk to Ivy and let her know what's going on. Okay. And then also take another look at the mirror and the, mm -hmm. the pieces that are left. I mean, I know we weren't able to get it off the wall last time, but it can't hurt to try again. And we, we can't take the train with us. We just have after this, right? Just a, just yeah. a, uh, uh, no, it's too late because you're already in the train. Never mind, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just the one piece left, but if we leave it here and we go get the piece and we got to come all the way back and, you know, find this again. Now, and who knows between all, now and then what's going to happen to the train. All I'm saying is how do how do we get the train out of this or how do we get the mirror frame? Oh, I don't think this? the train's coming out of this. Yeah, I agree with Bruce. I don't think <laughs> unless don't something think... magical happens, like Miss Rodden said. <laughs> um, unless something unless you can create an entire train out of your mind, Silas, I don't think we're having a train anymore. I, I don't anymore. think I can do that, but but I, I, I like I said, I'm I'm just saying, are you putting your lives on the line right now? And, and he's saying this super calmly okay. because, like, they're in this really horrible situation. It's like, are you putting your, um, you know, lives on the line um, just to, like, let the frame hold on to the mirror? Or are we actually trying to get that mirror frame out of the train right now? Because if so, we're going to have to drop you some power tools or something. Well, that's why Faruz is here. She's a power tool. So yeah, it's we're, true. we're just gonna start. That's not a very nice thing wall. to say about your friend. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll turn to Feruza. Cool. I mean, I meant it as a compliment. If you don't think it's a compliment, yeah. I mean, we figured we have you know Nev, you know, generally inquisitive and can fit in small spaces that are needed. And I'm like this, you know, jackhammer if needed. Also, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just saying a jackhammer might not be the best solution while this train is in its current rickety condition. Well, Silas, Rickety. we won't know until we get Rickety. to the mirror and figure things out. Rickety. Okay, but how are you going to get to the mirror? These are perfectly valid questions, Silas. I understand. Um, but we can't just not put the shard back. So this I is completely like agree. I, I'm just saying, like, if we're just putting the shard in, that might mean some different tactics than trying to power saw or hack and slash the mirror frame off the wall. I think we're trying to do both, but I think- Yeah, but we, well, I mean, well, we were talking last night about um, the hierarchy of needs or something like that. Um, I effective think, desire, yes. Effective desire, that was the thing. Okay, mm -hmm. Hobbs, I, I'll have to find a book. Um, can we, can you help like dig the hole bigger here? So that way, whatever we do, we don't have to go all the way back through that car again, because that I, was yeah. hard. I, I think I think Miss Robin could probably make it gigantic. Might not be the best thing for us to do <laughs> right now, but but yes, I'm sure that we can do something to make this bigger um, while you're trying to do it. But but either way, like I, well, I just think it's probably a bad idea to hack the wall with an axe, the way this yeah. train currently is. Well, okay, the hole in the snow above solves problem number one. Problem number two is getting down this drop cliff. Problem number three is getting the mirror off the wall or putting the mirror back or whatever is going to happen there. Okay, so what problem are we on right now? Two? We're on two. We, yeah. Okay. If, if, if the three of you, four of you up there can make this bigger so that we can climb out this way, we'll, we'll work on... Problem number one, three, three. Two, yeah, number problem, three. problem number three. Maybe we can get use like a rope or something and like we can, I don't know if there's anything strong enough on this train right now, being that it's so rickety. Um, that we can tie it to, I think we may have to like either let, let you down and I hold up top the rope and I don't know if both of us should go down or. Oh, well, I can have some everyone rope that I can so drop down this hole. So just to, is happening between death through an 18 foot long tube of snow. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, I'm down. <laughs> Go ahead, Maeve. So the crystal, the, the, the walls, the ice, the crystal seem to be made of similar material, perhaps to some of the other materials we've been encountering. And it seemed like we were seeing different places where bad things were happening. Ooh. Right? It seemed that we were looking into other places 
where things were maybe not so good. Yeah, but... Or not so great people might be there. What? I'm just what? wondering if this is a different one of those places. Which place is that? If we all saw places, which place is that that we're seeing through the mirror? Oh, that's a really what? deep question. I don't know. <laughs> it's getting, uh, getting deep. <laughs> can't answer that right now. Maybe have slept through the. <laughs> the you you were a whole lot of rats. I don't see any rats here. <laughs> a little, a lot of pre-coffee exposition. <laughs> any, anybody have any ideas on how to expand this hole? <laughs> Because, like, if we just start digging up here, I mean, it might just yeah, crash down, right? Something exploded. Well, You're dynamite in the walls of the train. <laughs> I would like to not explode the train while we're down here, but that, that'd be a fun thing to think about. Uh, Silas, if you can dig out the snow that's on top of where this car is or where you think this car is, I think that will actually help because they'll be less likely to disconnect and go boom. Um, meanwhile... And I'll look back over at Feruza. I can get us down there, but you're not gonna like it. Oh no. You want us to slip and slide down there, don't you? No, 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 no. No, well, because if we slip and slide down, then we're then we're never getting up. But we need to be able to go down and come back up. We need you to be turn able to turn into a spider and you want to crawl down the wall, don't you? It's, I mean look, why don't you take take the bed sheets off of the bed and tie them together? Once you're down there, you can make a rope. I'm, Wait, are we even near the compartment car? Wait a second. This is, so, yeah, the, this, this is the compartment car. We are um, in the compartment you car. You know, Ooh. I'll remind you, you know, the way this works again, there's a hallway along one side that has windows on the one side. There are doors on the other side that lead into each of your compartments. Um, yeah. It is on its end, which means that compartment F is the closest to you. Mm -hmm. You want to get to A, which is all the way down at the other side. This... Uh, carriage is you know 60 to 70 feet long probably mm -hmm. uh something in there uh so you know you're looking at a 60 to 70 foot drop down mm. but there is terrain right like there's mm. there's doors and Cables, windows doors, and things yeah, like that like, it's right. not you know it's not just a a well um, okay. but also for all we know the mirror shattered when the car fell over it's all over what? for all you know. Which, which, once right again, now. we won't know until we, we get into that room. We still need to find that out. Yes. Yeah. And I appreciate the optimism. <laughs> you know, oh, if it's shattered, it's then we're, then Frizzle and I are just going to take some. Here's the good news: if it's shattered and come out of the frame. You want philosophers? I can come in with some Nietzsche for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we already talked about Hobbes. It's okay. All right, Frizzle, do you want to just try to climb down, or do you want a ride? A ride? What do you mean? You're going to turn into a giant spider now? What are you referring to, Neb? And I'm going to just <laughs> keep my eyes locked with hers, and I'm going to remember that spider that we saw in the town uh, with all the the all the zombies yes. that went down the drain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for whatever reason, she's been thinking about that spider, but it's in her mind. It's so huge. She's been looking at all the, like, the little pieces and the parts and everything, yeah. and... Uh, she's also going to remember when she tried to be a big octopus, but ended up being a small octopus. And for oh, some reason, yeah. the large, the spider seems like an easier fit in her mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And she's going to sure. turn into a giant wolf spider. <laughs> a big, like with the blue hairs yes, on the, the, the fuzzy bits and like the little, the little almost cat like uh, Paws that they have. How 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 big is your giant wolf spider? <laughs> no. uh, they're they're a medium beast. So basically five, five feet. feet in diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Farisa, you guys it hear is... this ear peeling yeah. scream. It is terrifying. It is the Oh, there's thing something in there. We gotta go help them fight. <laughs> Mace Silas digging at the snow. Silas, in your head, if you're still concentrating on reading thoughts, but you hear is Neb going, I knew I was going to scare her. I tried, I tried, but I can't think of anything else. And if she tries to just let me crawl on down there as me, I'm just going to fall and things are going to be bad. So she'll let, I'll let her scream and then eventually it'll be okay. Okay, Neb, that's you, right? It's you, hey, Neb. Risa, have you ever seen the Ricola commercial or something? <laughs> like, let's be no! a little careful down there. 
No, I am not. What if she bites me? Neb, keep your teeth away from me. I love you, but keep your teeth away from me. It echoes right. through the car, <laughs> back into the lounge and dining room, as well as down into the car below and up through here. But everything stays stable. Neb does her best to tuck her fangs <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> and probably looks like the spider version of of a human when they're they've eaten something that's sour. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's trying to be as, as that doesn't make it better. Sure, you know when you're all spread out on your your five feet, you know, in, in diameter, but you can kind of pull it in to be like a little three foot, you know, cutesy thing. You know, oh, one of those oh, spiders with the big eyes, right? Exactly, <laughs> not quite as cute as a jumping I'll spider, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not not That's not that cute, unfortunately. I looked yes. I looked to see if jumping spider was one of them. Uh, yeah, Neb will do that and then lift up one of her legs. And, and once again, like spiders, they've got those cute little paws. Yeah. Um, All right. And then she's gonna turn around, and not only can she, uh, as the name implies, spider climb. Um, oh. But can she burrow? Uh, it's not. I've got blind sight, dark vision, Ooh. and I thought I could make webs. <gasps> you should be able to make a web. It has a web sense, right? It's, I've got web sense and web walker, but apparently I can't actually make a web. You can't make a web. You have to learn how to make one. That sounds I guess. crazy Seems. to me. I think that's. Yeah. I think I, that's I'm a, willing a to oversight. rule that you can. Yeah. Um, That'd be what, awesome. What you can't do is use it as a weapon right we're gonna say you okay. can't like shoot okay. webs you can't do that kind of thing but mm -hmm. um i'm i'm willing to say that if you want to like attach some webbing you can then move and create a strand of web across just like a spider would do uh, so yeah and you can't just like burst a web out but you can do strand by strand create you know that kind of a thing like a clothesline and that's uh, I want to start crawling down the right. the car, and there's mm -hmm. strategically like lines, uh, like a zigzag, so that Feruza has stuff to. It's not just a line down; it's like right. places right. she could hold on to with her hands and with her feet. Um, and I'll just be slowly doing that on the way okay. down. Okay, so, so here's your daily go ahead, nature fact: <laughs> wolf spiders don't actually spin webs. Well, there they, you go. They there are we go. Ground, they 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 spin silk, yeah. but they are ground hunters. So then they should and... be able to burrow. I feel like you should get the burrow. Yeah, it's that's <laughs> that that's the logic. Okay, they, so they you hunt have prey to... across open ground or hide. They hide in burrows and crevices. Right. So, Listen, okay. maybe maybe but this you have is. No web. Yeah. They knew what they Fun were doing. Nature you have no web. With the Fun nature facts. With the children there There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mae, for, for busting. <laughs> <Ned>. <laughs> no, I think great challenge. You turned into a spider that cannot produce webbing. Okay. Um, but you, so we'll get you through this way. So you, you, you used your hand to clear quite a bit with the rest of your spidery, you know, legs. You kind of clear the rest away till you get a sort of a window cleared so that you can see down into this shaft Oof. of a train carriage all the rest of you above fub are you know huddled around this hole kind of looking down we'll come to you in a minute if you are going to work on widening it or what you're going to do um neb there is just enough space it'll be a squeeze for your spider but you can pull all your legs in and kind of make your way into the inside of this looking down your dark vision as a, does that stick with you? Uh, I think this is a separate dark vision, but yes, because okay. I do have senses, blind sight, 10 feet, dark vision, right. wow. 60 feet. 60 so. feet, okay. So your yeah. dark vision from the 60 feet gets you almost to the bottom of this, this car. Um, you can see a lot of damage has happened to this and a lot of stuff has just flown around. Um, you can't quite see the bottom. So it, it sort of disappears into a dark haze down there. Um, but all of the windows along the one side have been busted. Mm -hmm. A lot of the doors have sort of fallen open and are, you know, off on the side on if they had hinges. Um, and yeah, and, and definitely snow and ice. It's slick on all of the walls. I'll pause over the, what essentially is the drop. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I guess they don't like. They, I just have to turn my whole body. 
So yeah. I, I will turn around in place to look at you, Feruza, and kind of just wait to see what you want to do if you want to just climb after me or climb on top of me. One of the two. Okay. Uh, Feruza just like goes, okay, this is Neb. It's not a real spider. It's a Neb spider. And she's going to like nod at, nod at you and look at your, I don't know. They I mean, you can't even make webs. Know. It's not a real spider. <laughs> it's a magic spider. Uh, so, and she's going to like nod at you and wave and she's going to walk um, like just inch closer to you sort of in that car and she's going to look up at the hole and is anyone looking down in the hole at all? <laughs> Silas is like, oh, help. <laughs> I was digging a little bit, but I'm okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Like, just think think of it I like, would... okay, yeah. It's... I don't know. The spider verse. It's okay. We're fine. Okay. And she's gonna intro I'm her. never going to get to see that second and third movie. <laughs> Silas, for you, Neb hears that and immediately, Spider Man, the... Spider Neb, Spider Neb, Spider Neb, <laughs> does whatever a Spider Neb can. Except for spin webs. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's okay Rizzo though. Just yeah. gonna crawl over and like I guess grab on to like your the, the the part of your body. But in her head, Silas, you would hear, "I'm not hugging a spider. I'm not hugging a spider. I'm not hugging a spider. This isn't a spider." She's, She's hugging me as a spider. This is amazing. No, you are mounting a spider for Riza. He says out loud. <laughs> She's kind of squishy. The oh. fibrous hairs on her oh. body are kind of like they're like like they're fibrous they're yeah. a little sharp it's more like like um the coarse a little bit hair yeah. you know like porcupine quills except not as sharp as you hold on it just Ooh. squishes a little neat beneath you as you oh. won't you know get a grip um be careful oh and right bug. and then i'll turn around so the peruse is going first so that she's not like <laughs> and and i will so, <laughs> And You're then turn upside down over this like oh my god <laughs> as you just with your arms and your legs <sighs> wrap around gripping onto Neb's spider bulbous spider body as you you know right by your head you see her eight eyes kind of looking around in all directions as in her legs move you feel the hairs brush up against your body as she lowers you into the darkness temporarily blocking out the light from the hole you've made from above Fruz is gonna br bring her mind somewhere else she's somewhere she's somewhere she's hearing she's waves gone. on a beach yeah <laughs> all right the rest of you looking from above see, you know, all, the eight eyes of Neb look up, the two <laughs> eyes of Feruza look up. Neb turns around, pu pushing Feruza down through the window as she kind of disappears into the train car below. We'll come back to you two. The three of you up top. Four, I guess, you know, Pippin is still there. Maeve, you said you had started to dig. Is that something you want to continue I was with? starting to dig when I thought they were in trouble. Right. But... At that when I found out it wasn't I mean they ask us to try. make this bigger though yeah so. we can try and hey Pivum can you turn into something that's like you know like I don't know a badger mole or something oh, dear I gotta see if he can <laughs> I mean I'm not trying to just use you for the amazing <laughs> animals that you can turn into but I mean, you know, if you have a power, if you ha if you have a light, you don't want to hide it under a bushel. You want to let it shine. He starts to kind of like roll around in the um, mm -hmm. let's see where is this now? Uh, roll, you know, he starts to roll around in the snow, almost kind of like cleaning his fur. Um, oh, where is it? Darn it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, he, he, he pops back into Pippum. Um, he says, uh, yeah, I, I can, I can turn into something that can burrow that out really, really good. Um, um, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, um, I, uh, I'm going to need to take a little, like a 
little breather afterward, okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You get that hole big, we will handle the rest. Okay. Um, I think I can do it now. Do I need... Which point can I... Twice per short rest, right? I think twice per short rest, so actually he's going to need it first. Mm. So he's so, going to need an hour before oh he can gosh. turn into something else. Well, we're, we're going to try to do, see what we can uh, in, you know, in the meantime, buddy. But uh, okay. listen, like you need any lemonade <laughs> or anything. So he's going to go just like plop down and kind of, you know, just try to take it easy and rest and gather his, you know, his, his form of, um, of uh, uh, sort of meditation or resting is going to be kind of like drawing things in the snow and covering them up and doing more sigils and little things like that um, as he takes an hour to see if he can become something else. So the three of you are wanting to dig out this as best you can. Yeah, I, I think mean, so. We need to open it up, right? If we don't have anything else. And know. as we're digging, I'm just going to sort of yes. casually say, by the way, there's just a monster that's carved like a 30 foot path. Just through the forest. It's fine. Oh, it's so nice and lovely. And no, 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 no. We've got to come back to that. <laughs> come back to us. What, what, what does that mean, Maeve? You know how when you mow a lawn, it's like that, but bigger and crushing trees or have you ever seen like a, a zamboni or yeah well a zamboni tends to smooth everything out and it's nice maybe and you want it uh ever seen a microburst a microburst storm first of all are, are you most, kidding me they're the no. most terrifying thing someone needs to make a druid that can cast <laughs> microburst yeah like, i i know literally like almost level central park terrifying wow. um they take, they knock all the trees one way and it happens fast. So there was a microburst that you saw somewhere? I didn't see, I didn't see the storm. I just saw the, uh, I'm trying to think, or it's, it's almost like a, when you take a sled through a fresh snow, snowfall, that sort of path. So but little, like tree, it made like a. No, no, with that, that was. 30 feet wide going through 30 feet all, wide huge trees trees falling and just you know and you're just now bringing it's, this up but there hasn't been another chance we were busy dealing with fallen fallen mm -hmm. trains and digging holes and exploding skylight sides of iron and goodness knows what else wait didn't we say something <laughs> that like destroyed yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I got really scared because honestly, one of my biggest fears is like giants. I don't know why I'm scared of giants because I've never actually seen one, but I am. I'm di discovering that I am. Um, so didn't we see like something happened in the forest when we were around the mines, right? <clears throat> yes, but. We didn't get a good look at it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, we just like there was heard a lot it. happening there, and there was there was the, the river and the the there was just so much, and it was new and explosives and goodness. So is but this like remember, that Neb, rock dude from the Neb was the story? one that like disappeared off into the woods to really investigate, and the rest of you never really caught up with her. So she's the only one who got close enough to that event. But go ahead. Yeah, but she she did share that with the group, yes, though, right? She yes. did. She came back and shared. Yeah. Um, but is this like the rock dude from Never Ending Story? Like just, you know, ro rolling through? I have through no the clue. I have no idea what caused it. It's just like a, almost like a winding river through the trees. And wait, this is in the direction that we're headed for that last shard? Straight through the woods. In fact, we don't even need to take the train there if we don't want to, but we need the train to get home. So, or wherever we're going. And so, and it's all our stuff and the mirror and, uh, showers yeah but, uh, i've got a bunch of towels <laughs> down there mm. so like we've got to recover what's on this train so many towels so many towels <gasps> neb comes up one towel in each of her eight legs <laughs> just for you silas <laughs> robin what are you doing while they're digging and having this conversation um Robin would also be digging 
Okay. Uh, if if she felt that it was structurally sound, um, mm -hmm. it is, can I get a good sense of that? If it will be safe for all of us to be there digging? Yeah. So the the train itself, the the car that they're in now, is so far down. There's 18 mm -hmm. feet of snow. Mm -hmm. You know, your weight added on top of that at this point is not changing that ratio very much. Um, so you think, yes, you're safe here. As you get down closer to it, maybe there might be more danger. But at this point, as you're digging at these, you know, the first 10 feet, you're probably not going to affect the weight of anything down there. If anything, you're lessening the weight on top of it. Um, it's also okay. a very small, much smaller surface area that you're dealing with, that train mm -hmm. end versus the whole long, uh, the whole length of the train. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Robin's just like digging out with you guys. And while you guys are having this conversation, she's just kind of like, do you guys ever feel like we're at the beach and we're just pulling out sand to build a sand castle? And she's just like, kind of just in her own world. And she's just trying to have fun with it. <laughs> As Silas hears that, um, like every time she's scooping snow and putting uh -huh. it somewhere, um, he is going to just kind of in between him uh, shoveling because he is also uh telekinetically like scooping things okay out. yes like, gotcha. Um, he, he, gotcha he's using that and so um he like as the snow is going over there after just a little while it looks like where she's throwing the snow is like forming into like a snow castle yes um but but it's like really subtle like he's not trying to like let her know about it immediately but it's like <laughs> if she glances over there she eventually yeah. sees me what you notice as you're you're doing this pivot on his long rest as this this snow castle starts to form pivot's you know decorations that he's doing in the snow around it begin to look like an english garden oh. around the castle with all of its little shapes and hedges um as you know he is very comfortable in gardens and so his sort of zen practice is to create gardens oh. outside of your castle so the three of you are digging. You're doing good work with the three of you, plus telekinesis, as well as, you know, I think, Robin, you have a, a trowel, right? Mm -hmm. You have some gardening mm -hmm. tools. You've got knitting needles if it ever gets too uh, icy. So you all are making steady work at that as you discuss this terrifying swath of forest that has just been felled um, and now awaits you. So we will head back to Neb and Feruza. No. For no, <laughs> you don't want to go back to you. <laughs> no, what path would you like to take down this car? So you can go down the windows, the roof, the doors, or the floor. What seems to be the safest? Perception check. Okay. Uh, actually, I would love if you would do that again. It's still plus seven. <laughs> Thank you so much. You think the floor. Okay. Then that is that is what I will crawl to. And then I'm not going fast, but I'm trying to go at a, a steady pace to get us to the bottom mm -hmm. in a reasonable amount of time. And I do have a climb speed of 40. So I, okay. think, I think it's just uh, her intent is to go as far as possible until it's obvious that Feruza could just land Step essentially off. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. okay all right you begin your walk down the floor of this train uh it is quite icy um your web you know your sticky feet and everything help you do that so you're fine coming down but you you know feruza as you look around yourself going down this dark cold icy tunnel um absolutely climbing down would be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. As you're going down and you look to your left and you see the open doors here and there that lead into your compartments, um, yeah. you know, first being F and then E and then D and then C. The ones that are open, you can see again, all of the contents have fallen down onto the whichever side was there. Mm -hmm. um, let me pull this up so I can see which way. Okay, yes, yeah, so they were all the same here. So everything has fallen from the bedside onto the desk closet side of these compartments. Um, okay. So all of your pillows, your blankets, any clothing or anything, lights, books, any 
everything that you left by the bed has just fallen down. You've noticed that the, the vanity mirrors in your rooms as you pass those doors are all smashed by whatever pieces have come down and smashed onto them. Um, you make it your 40 feet. You've still got two more compartments to go. It is getting colder. You feel very clearly, and the light from above is barely, it's a pinprick of light. You can't hear or see anything above there as you continue to bring yourself down. Um, okay. You pass by compartment B, and there is the door to compartment A. There is still about 10, 15 feet until the bottom. Um, there was less debris in this hallway, so down there is mostly rock, snow, there's some bits of tree that got caught up in it, um, that mm -hmm. have all kind of landed on the, you know, the sort of lower bottom of this tube, this chute. Um, so you're still 15 feet from Feruza being able to get off your back, but you are now opposite the compartment door for A, which okay. doesn't exist. Oh. Thanks to mm. Feruza. <laughs> In this case, it's probably actually going to help. Um, <laughs> Would climbing down to let Feruza off at the bottom still be the, the best way of going about this? Or do I think I should reposition myself so she could just essentially step into the doorway? You, you could do that. The, you know, the, 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 um, the head, the, the water, water closet toilet room is sort of yes. right there on the other side of the door. You could place her, she could climb off your back uh, there be right there and sort of okay. standing on that. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's, that's what I'll do. And so then, you park yeah. yourself on, you know, you're holding on to the floor vertically right next to the door, which is, you know, going off this way. For Ruza, you step off onto the the toilet door here, uh, as yes. it sort of is. Um, as you take a step in there, you are chilled to the bone. Please make a constitution saving throw. You might have advantage of this or resistance. Yeah, I do. I do. I need it. <laughs> Oh my God, 14. 14. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to shake it off, mm -hmm. but it does ping your brain. Every time you have come to this room in the past, it's been warmer than the other rooms. Now, it is not. Uh, Fruz is going to reluctantly look over at Nat. Nat's and... eight eyes turn to look at you. Okay. You look I imagine I've positioned myself in such a way so it's just like the two main eyes to try to be as 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 least creepy as possible. So you just you just see like the two big round ones instead of yes. all the rest of the little ones. All right, Fruz is gonna instinctively reach for our axe and then remember. <laughs> um, I won't take it personally. <laughs> colder. Do you feel like it's colder here than usual? Do spiders get cold? Uh, two she legs are going to come up in, in like a half a shrug. <laughs> mm -hmm. The wolf spider half shrugs at you. It does, it does the meme. I keep turning mm -hmm. into oh, animals gosh. that don't really have shoulders. And so it's a <laughs> lot of just... It's like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have not entered the room. So the... No. the oh, because you just let me off in the door, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of did that on purpose because while she hasn't said this out loud, I figure I would probably be as freaked out <laughs> as <laughs> Spurza, seeing, seeing a giant spider. So I will use one of my uh, my legs to like pat the door frame and then hunker down again. Okay. Mm, smart, smart. Sit you down. Okay, um, for, uh, for a look, just looks at Nab again and says, it's, it's, it's definitely colder here than normal. This is really weird. And so it's colder. Do I? Is there any? Like, is there more wind? Is it, or is it just colder? Do I see Perception anything? Check. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Nine. Nine. <laughs> it's also icier. It's icier. It's like everything around you is just crystallized in ice. This entire room. Almost, mm -hmm. you remember Robin had mentioned those like ice hotels when you all were chatting last night. This is That's like, right. if the walls, you can barely see the wallpaper through the like thick sheet of ice. It's reminding you of the ice maze. 
it's reminding you of those. It's, it, it's almost like the ice has taken this room over in the way that you had seen fire take it over previously. I wonder why it's so icy in here. This is weird. I mean, it is, I guess, deeper than the other cars. So maybe that, I mean, but wouldn't that mean it was warmer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Spider from <laughs> Yes, dear. All right, so the mirror is across the way. Just, right? it's just, you know, it's basically, you're standing mm -hmm. on the, the water closet. The mm -hmm. little, you know, vanity is here with the yeah. mirror and the shower station is beyond. As you look up above you, you can see the big ornate bed luckily was tacked down. It in. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can absolutely see shattered glassware, some of the old antique lamps that got, got loose and shattered all along down here. Um, okay. There are no antique towels, of course, because... Silas, they're all in Silas's oh, room. Uh, <laughs> so only the breakables uh, went flying. But as you very Is that slowly. Our new band name, Only the Breakables. Only the Breakables. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the episode name. Oh. Um, <laughs> real, real quick. Go ahead, yes. From where I am in the doorway, how far yes. away is the mirror? Um, mm -hmm. Four feet. Okay. As Fruz is making her way over there, do I see anything or sense anything with my blind sight? Nope. <clears throat> blind sight would give you, it's not tremor sense, it's just full on blind sight. Uh, right? It's such yeah. a tricky one for me to remember yeah, exactly what you get with that. Mm. It's it basically how, uh, you know, Matt Murdock saw. Like echolocation idea. Uh, yeah, creatures off. without eyes, yeah. such as Grimlocks and Grey Oozes, typically have this special sense as your creatures with echolocation okay. or heightened senses. So yeah, it's okay. basically just a different okay. way basically of seeing. Gotcha. Radar sense. Yeah. Um, you, you can tell that a lot of damage has happened in that area. And Feruza, you as well, mm -hmm. as your feet slip a little bit underneath you and you bend down onto all fours to keep yourself from sliding around, mm -hmm. you bend over to look and you can see that the mirror has slid. All like slid down place. the wall or slid Slid like... down the wall um, and is lodged in the ice at the ceiling. Oh, that's the noise that Feruza makes, Nev. <laughs> A few the, more eyes come up over the, the wood. Okay. The mirror has slid. It's like stuck in the ice. I don't know if we can get it out of there. I don't think it's broken though. Can, we, can I tell if it's broken? It's just in one piece you, or is it? Yeah, you, you, I mean, you're, it's, this is all kind of, you're just shuffling side to side. There's nowhere to fall except forward into it. So you get over closer to it. It is intact other than the missing bit. There's the, you know, sort of top piece of it is sort of lodged in this newly forming ice. You can see the shadow through the ice where it was, where the dust had collected, where it had been so stuck to the wall that you were yeah. unable to remove it previously. It's as though it just slid off down and lodged oh. near the ceiling in the ice. Maybe we can get it out of the ice. We can melt it out and carry it with us. Okay. Spider nod. Yeah. So Nev, Nev come over. I'm and remembering there's an audio podcast, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to ax it out, so bring your fire fists over here and melt this thing out of here. I'll hold up my two of my eight <laughs> legs and then just kind of... You see me looking back the way we came yeah. and then back down at my legs and then back the way we came and then back down at my oh, legs. Oh, she can't use the fire in her tarantula form. <laughs> the wolf cider, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's think. The reason why we are in this situation is because we are very smart people and spiders. We can figure out how to get the mirror out of here and carry it back with us safely. Okay. It's stuck in ice. It's off the wall. I mean, which means it's off the wall. That's a win. <laughs> Problem three point B has been <laughs> checked off. <laughs> yes, Silas. Silas along the way is definitely like, I don't know if they're within 120 feet. Okay. But I definitely know a direction. Yes. Um, And so I am like trying and, and, and I'm just, you know, whispering like, 
hey, are you there yet? Um, like, yeah. and, and I, I start doing that like every, you know, three minutes probably. Yeah. So you guys probably at this point are down like six feet. Like you've done a good, you've dug a good grave here uh, as you're kind of digging your way down. Um, That's reassuring so, to hear. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you've dug, dug yourself a little snow grave. Oh my um, gosh. Down below, you are within 120 feet, I believe. Ooh. Yes, you would be. Um, so which who are doing you it, Doing it to, to Feruza. To Feruza, you hear... Because he knows that Neb was a spider and can't talk back. <laughs> Feruza, you hear in your mind, are you there yet? How you doing? <gasps> Silas is calling me. <laughs> I, um, I heard that too, because remember, <laughs> you can reply to me. Neb holds um, an arm up to the side of the spider's face like she's holding a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't ever do that again. Silas, the mirror has moved off the wall. It's already off the wall. The problem is it's encased in ice. And Ned can't use her fire fist to get it out of the ice. So if you have any ideas on how to warm the ice up to get it out of the ice, we can take it with us. I'd love to hear them. I mean, most of the time to warm up ice, you use heat or a fire. Yes. So do you know, do you have a lighter? Do you have like anything that... Uh, there are a bunch of towels down there. I know that for sure. There <laughs> a bunch of towels. Maybe we can go. Oh, and she's going to turn to Neb and say, maybe we can get some of those towels and go to the kitchen. Not all maybe of them. Works, light them on fire. Oh, does anybody smoke on this trip? Anybody have a lighter in their room? Silas, you want to ask the team? <laughs> hey, um, they're kind of, they're kind of like, looking for lighters or something to start a fire. Basically, they've told me that the mirror is off the wall, which I think is a good break for us, honestly. Um, they said that the mirror's off the wall and we can theoretically try to get it out of there now. Um, but they need fire. Oh, oh, yes. In my trunk. <laughs> no, In my trunk, I have a heating pad. I do. You, like for arthritis you're saying like no, like you, you you put it in your bed and you lay on it at night and it keeps you warm <laughs> but you and have also to have for arthritis and things they're electricity wonderful electricity for that right ah uh, yes i, I have electricity <laughs> they're portable they're wonderful they're great for travel highly recommended <laughs> Perusa does have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Feruza. Oh, no. Miss Robin says that in her trunk, she has like a heating pad. I don't really know what that is, um, but she has one, and oh. I think it needs electricity. Okay. So I could possibly try something. I mean, are we? That's what we're doing here. We're all just trying things, right? I can try something. Sure. What? Yeah, we're what? all just trying things. <laughs> Robin was F, right? Having uh, F. Miss Robin, which which room were you? Which room was I? <laughs> we don't remember. Oh no. I feel like I, I was I the do. last one. I have it. She's yes. F. I'm gonna scream because it's all the way you back. Always to the top. know that. I it was either first or last. Robin, just... it was in F. Correct. You're in F, oh. so that's last. Yeah. So. So. Way back uh, up she, at the top. She's in F. <laughs> all right. You guys um, might be closer. So I just thought of something, though. Yeah, how, how far away are we at this point? So you were, I said you're down about six feet. So that means you have another four, wait, 18, 16, 14, 12, 12, 12 feet more to get how, how to How big the is the hole in the first place? Just like a pipe? It, she, yeah, she made like a, I was imagining like a foot wide, maybe even a little smaller, but yeah, just a pipe to see, see through. Um, and you guys are digging it open enough for a person to be able to fit through. Um, so I, you know, I think, you know, the, the 10 minutes that they've done so far, I'm pretty generous to give you six feet. Yeah. Um, so we're going to say basically, you know, we'll say that six feet for 10 minutes. So you need another 20 minutes to get down there. Can, can she just break it out of the ice, you know, use her muscle? Well, can, uh, that's what I was thinking is just in case we should check to make sure that ice melts. Because mm. if it doesn't, it might be like the ice, the, the crystal ice in, a... in the, in the mm. place. And if it is... 
we think that might be dangerous. So we have to be careful with that because if it's that same material that was the shards, if you yeah. break that and it shatters, we're yeah. in trouble. Because we don't know what that would do. So check your reflection in it. Ooh. Not in the mirror, but in the ice. Because there if it's matched a, in time. There's a lot of talking going up here and I'm going to try to boil it down to a little bit. Um, I was focused. Something about it could be that weird ice that we've come across a couple of times. So do you see your reflection in it? Is your reflection smirking back at you like a punk? Or like... Um, <laughs> So, like, you, you mean the ice that's near the mirror? Is that what you're talking about, Silas? Yes, because we're we're thinking like you're you're kind of like a, you know, um, you know uh, power girl now or something, and so like maybe you uh, could just rip it. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Bruce is gonna like scuttle over. Yep. And try um, to look in the ice specifically. There's very little light in here to create a reflection. Do you have any way to create a little light? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm just, I don't think without. I mean, you're uh, electric. Oh, <laughs> let me think. You know what? I do because I have. I do because I have thaumaturgy. Hey! Yay! So I can do flame to flicker bright or dim. A minor wonder? Would that be a minor wonder? I don't know. Yeah, I buy that. Okay. So she's going to go, I don't have any light. I can't see anything really. I can't really see my reflection. And as she says that, she sort of just puts her hand like on the ice and starts touching it. Like I can't see myself. And then all of a sudden her hand sort of just lights up and she's like, yeah. There's just Whoa. this little light. It's, it's almost like light. you're holding a little star or a little <laughs> sun like a little... in your hand and it just lights up your face. And now as you look in the reflection of the ice sort of at the base of the mirror where it's stuck, you see a reflection back. I'm going to roll this perception check for you. What is your perception? You know what it looks like? You know those sparklers you have when you're a little kid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a sparkler. She's Absolutely. Like, it's That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what is your perception bonus, Teresa? I am proficient and I'm plus three. Plus three. You look down at your reflection and you see your own face looking back at you. A little bit odd, a little bit excited, but it looks pretty perfect to you. And that is where we will end our day today. Oh! Thank you all so much for being here with me. Um, as Feruza looks at her perfect reflection back. Um, and please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you next time. Bye, everyone.